President Reagan is widely credited with winning the Cold War. And it's true. In fact, here's a new book that came out just this month that makes the point. I was lucky enough to work for President Reagan and played a small role in all that. And let me talk to you for a couple of minutes about what happened and what we did. What made President Reagan different from any other political leader in the West is that all the other political leaders had one objective, which was to not lose the Cold War. President Reagan wanted to win the Cold War. And whether you're playing tennis or geopolitics, the difference between playing to not lose and playing to win is enormous. And that was the difference. President Reagan went on offense. Part of what he did to do that was to bring in a group of people who would play to win, to end the Cold War. One of the people he brought in was Bill Casey as a CIA director. The CIA used to be a great intelligence service in the years after World War II. It emerged from the OSS, which was the great World War II intelligence service. But by the late 1970s, the CIA had become bureaucratic, sclerotic. It had the kind of the body language and look and feel of a Midwest insurance company. Reagan wanted more than that. What a lot of people didn't realize is that Bill Casey had run secret operations for the OSS. So he was one of the country's most experienced intelligence officers. So Bill took over at the CIA, and I was part of the small team that he brought in. I was the special assistant to the director and then vice chairman of the National Intelligence Council. In a sense, I was a one-man B team. By the end of the 1970s, the Soviet economy was in trouble. But most people didn't realize that. Even the CIA was producing analyses which said that the Soviet economy was growing at more than 3% every year. And if it's growing at more than 3% every year, they're not in trouble and the Cold War is going to go on forever. I thought that was wrong. In fact, as an editor at Fortune, I'd written some articles which took that point of view, that the Soviet economy was in fact weaker than it looked. Well, now I was on the inside and I had the director's backing. So I began to pull together intelligence that said the Soviet economy is in trouble. And that's what we began sending to the president. Now a lot of people said, oh dear, if the Soviet economy is in trouble, let's back off. Never poke sticks at a wounded bear. The president's attitude was, hey, if my enemy's on his knees, we'll break his head. That's the difference between playing defense and playing offense. I invented a new kind of intelligence art form, which was the private, highly classified memo to the director, where nobody got their hands on it except the author. And I began pulling together the intelligence that talked about this. What happened was something no one expected. All through the intelligence community, people found me and began to give me intelligence that had never reached the director before. For example, somebody walked into my office one day, to this day I don't know who he was, and he handed me a report. A train in the Soviet Union from Moscow had been filled with meat and the workers hijacked the train. It was sort of a Walmart special in a sense. They hijacked the train to get the meat and the army came out and surrounded the workers. And this was crazy. This went right to the Politburo and they panicked. They told the army, back off, give the meat to the workers. Now this is the workers' paradise. They're hijacking trains for meat. We had that report on the president's desk in five minutes. In addition to that, the president challenged the Soviet Union to an arms race. He knew that would break them economically. He launched the strategic defense initiative, what people call Star Wars. The Russians knew it would work because they were trying to do it, but we had the money. We pushed down oil prices, which helped our economy and hurt theirs because oil prices were the Soviet Union's major foreign hard currency earner. We stopped the big natural gas deal with the Europeans that would have given the Soviet Union the money they needed to compete. We backed five anti-communist insurgencies around the world. So everywhere you looked, we were pushing the Soviets. We had gone from defense to offense. We invaded Grenada. It's a small island, but that's the first time we took a piece off the board. That's why that mattered. By the time President Reagan left office in 1988, the Soviet Union was on its knees. And three years later, the Berlin Wall had come down, 
and the Soviet Union literally ceased to exist, and the Cold War was over, and we had won it. And that was an exciting time. It was fun to be part of something like that. Mm -hmm.